Hello everyone and welcome back to Mod Development in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I'm here with an update to RP2000 along with Sure Strut Engines and the Crew Vessels Pack, both of which are dependencies of the RP2000 career mode. Uh, for those who don't know about RP2000, it is a career mode for real solar system and realism overhaul that starts in the year 2000 instead of in 1950. And our 1950 is RP0 and RP1. There's already a career mode like that. Uh, this one starts in the year 2000, and it's meant to be easier and more like what people expect from stock. So it's more for people who are coming over from stock. RP1 would be the option if you wanted much more complexity and details, and so that's a harder one. This is easier, meant for people who are just warming up to real solar system and don't want to deal with all of the complex systems that are in RP1. It is based on RP0, which RP1 was also based on. Like RP0, it uses Community Tech Tree, and RP1 has developed away from Community Tech Tree. The reason that's important is because using Community Tech Tree for RP2000 means that a lot of mods come sort of compatible with it. They're placed in the Tech Tree somewhere. Uh, though I have to make changes every now and again. So that's the idea. And one of the problems has been we don't have all of the contracts that I've been wanting. And some of them were misconfigured because contract configurator, which the contracts depend on, has sort of changed over time. And actually a lot of old contract packs don't seem to be updated for it anymore. So I've tried to make updates. So I fixed a bunch of the contracts and rebalanced them. Uh, incidentally, the rescue and recovery is just a stock when I like the rescue contracts, and so is the click science and all. The only contracts that I'll be referring to are the ones in the RP2000 category, and so I've rebalanced them somewhat, and we now have some of the human contracts that weren't popping up popping up now, so we can see those. The new space station contract is a thing, but uh, you also have to do the first space station contract, which is in Milestones. And that, I think, uh, depends on some technology that we don't have. So that's why it's X'd out, though I wish it would say that. I'll have to see, though. We have to make sure. We have various contracts here, but I've added a few things. Uh, I've added some orbital contracts for Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn. Hopefully those will work properly, because I'm not that good at modifying co with contract configurator. I, I, the syntax for creating contracts is difficult for me. Uh, especially when they're interlocking contracts, where one contract depends on another contract, like you build a space station and then you have to crew it. I'm not good at that sort of thing. I'll have to, I still have to figure that out. But anyway, hopefully these will be smooth enough and give you enough time to do them. Uh, oh, Mars orbit we need to fix. One year is not going to be good enough. I'll work on that. But I've come up with some novel contracts. I don't know if they'll work right. Um, here you're collecting 10 ore from Mars. It says launch new vessel or none. Um, hopefully that will be good. And then you have to go to Mars and then get 10 ore. Very simple, sort of a sample return mission, but I intended for, for it to be a more resource accumulation mission, like there's some re rare resource on another planet, and then you can repeatedly get more of that resource to get funds. That's the idea. So I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to have to run through it. We'll see. And same idea here. This is for the moon. Uh, the Mars one pays a little bit better. Uh, the moon one pays a little bit less. But yeah, still a healthy amount. And there's also now a contract for a base on the Mars. Well, uh, in the contract pack that I'll be linking, it'll say Mars. <laughs> Let's put it that way and a base on the moon. They're very generous. My goal is to give you guys the opportunity to make a nice base, and I'm playing it hard, so these amounts will be even better for those who are playing normal. And yeah, uh, four Kerbals, very straightforward, just land a base on, uh, I, mean, I mean, it could be a vessel, but the idea is that it should be enough money so that you can make a base that you're proud of, you know, instead of just the most bare bones thing that you can, you know, you don't, you shouldn't be struggling with these, hopefully, but we'll see. I'll try it out. So I'll make more contracts like these. If they end up working, I'm going to have to try out this sort of thing. Collecting ore, of course, requires a drilling unit, um, which 
because Aro, I think, adopted something of mine, uh, the drilling unit is actually lighter. Uh, in stock, it's 0.75 tons. In realism overhaul, it's only 0.1. Uh, I think that was my doing. But uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, that, that at least is a saving grace. And the small one is even lighter, I think. So, but we do have a lot of other drills associated with USI and everything. Uh, we could have other contracts for USI resources. There are probably rare resources that would be worth something to bring back. I don't know if you would get the money back by just like recovering vessel and getting the value from recovering vessel. Maybe that would be a thing. So we'll have to see about that. So that's uh, one set of improvements. That's for RP2000. I also moved the survey scanner and some of the solar parts. I guess we can see that quickly. Okay, right. So I've moved the non-retractable solar extending solar panels into electrics instead. I thought I'd move these solar panels over to basic science but, and the battery over here somewhere, but I'll have to review that. I was intending to do that, but maybe I didn't get down, down to that. But I thought it was critical in electrics to have some extendable solar panels. So we have that. And so that's one improvement. Now, aside from the RP2000 stuff, we'll go into a sandbox save to see some of the other things. So I haven't done it for the small Lynx spacecraft, which is part of the crew vessels pack, but I have for the larger Lynx spacecraft. I've added a hatch here. I had previously had this model with a hatch. I, didn't, I don't know why I didn't have it as part of the crew vessels pack in the first place. But now that has a visible hatch and also uh, EVA capable shell with an actual gap. So you can EVA out from the large Lynx. This is the four person Lynx. But you can't from the three-person links, the Lynx S Neo still, uh, you can EVA out when it's like this, but you can't EVA out when it has the shell on top. And that's because I hadn't made the cutout for that. It shouldn't be too hard, but it, it, it does do weird things like, uh, see the distortions around here? That's because of the weird things I did to make that cutout. So anyway, uh, so this one, is a preliminary pod, three-person pod that you can't EVA out of, and this is a more formalized four-person pod that you can. And let's just verify. And again, in the lander form without the shell, you can still EVA out of the three-person one. So this is part of the crew vessels pack. So there we go. Uh, Jeb has no problem, can climb, no issues. All right. And then there's updates to the Surestrut engine pack, which adds a whole bunch of engines. So the Surestrut engine pack adds these RCS thrusters. Anything with SE dash on it is the Surestrut engine pack. And so it's these ports and then these engines over here, not those, these. So up till here. So it's a whole bunch of engines. They are either hypergolic with MMA, well, a variety of options, MH Mon3, Aerozine, or UDMH. I just set the ISPs to be equal. The difference is meaningless to me. Uh, but yeah, so there's the hypergolic engines, and then there's kerosene, liquid oxygen engines, methane oxygen engines, and hydrogen oxygen engines so far, and a variety of all of those. The fixes were mainly to the plumes, uh, so they are now looking better, though still real plume plumes, sorry, waterfall fans. And uh, I also switched up the models. For some strange reason, uh, this staged combustion engine had looked like a gas generator engine with uh, gas generator nozzles out. And this one uh, has inherited a different model that used to belong to this one. So this one used to be that one. It's, it's complicated, but it's all much better now. Uh, as it turns out, they're the same size because of the nozzle ratio differences. Even though they have different thrust, uh, the no nozzle ratio differences between them. But I swapped them so that now the stage combustion one looks more like a stage combustion one. This is gas generator, definitely. That's OK. And then uh, this, uh, uh, this one is gas generator, and this one was gas generator. Yeah, these two. And then that one, those are the ones that were swapped. Uh, you, if you've used these engines, their nodes might be different now. Uh, so 
yeah, you'll have to replace them potentially. So that's it. That those are the changes, just three mods. I'll link all three in the video description to the latest version, the current version. Uh, I'll also link the way to install RP2000. I have a video on that. And hopefully people will be interested in using it, but there's a lot of work to do. Uh, balancing contracts and making sure that there are enough interesting contracts for people to do. I have to work on getting sciences. I'm considering making the magic orbital science uh, requirement and seeing how that works out. So I'll add that to my RP2000 career mode series and see if that's a way to get more interesting sciences uh, and instead of just the barometer, ther thermometer, gravity scan, etc. All right, so those are the improvements to RP2000. If you have any other requested improvements, please uh, tell me in the comments. So with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.